Now, I'm going to finish up with a bonus case and then we'll have plenty of time for questions. And this is just an unbelievable case. And I don't expect anyone to know this because I've only seen this twice in my career. An old man with a skin nodule on the leg, big diffuse sheet. Sorry for the folds and cracks, but sometimes it happens. And going closer, there's kind of sheets of pale histiocytes, aggregates of lymphocytes. I thought about Rosei Dorfman disease when I first saw this, actually. I thought it's kind of pink and blue. For me, Rosei Dorfman, most of the cases I've seen are subcutaneous, not dermal, but it can occur in the dermis. But I feel like I much more often see Rosei Dorfman as a subcutaneous mass um, and less often see it in the dermis, personally. But this one really made me think of that. But as I looked around, I thought, what the heck? There's giant cells here. Like, there were giant cells, and they're actually like granulomas, real granulomas. And in my experience, Rosei Dorfman can have fibrosis, it can have variable amounts of inflammation, but I don't recall ever seeing like good, real granulomas in Rosei Dorfman. So that made me think, huh, that's strange. Here's some more areas. Look, I mean, those are nice kind of epithelioid to spindle histiocytes making aggregates, you know, real granulomas there. But look, it looks like in periplesis. Oh my gosh, that looks so good, doesn't it? It's got plasma cells. It's got little, little, so many perfect vacuoles. It's a perfect picture of periplesis. But the nuclei of the histiocytes didn't look quite right to me. And the granulomas didn't make sense. I think I did an S100 and it just showed patchy, like, you know, background dendritic cells and scattered Langerhans cells like you see in any sort of um, process in the skin that's inflamed. Uh, so I thought, well, this is weird. So I have to admit, I did kind of an embarrassing number of stains here trying to figure out what this was. And then I thought, you know, plasma cells and granulomas, that always makes me think of something. Does anyone know what this is? And again, I can edit this out later. And I, I've already admitted to you that it took me a while to figure this out. And then finally, once I thought of what stain I needed, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I don't expect that any of you have probably ever even seen this before, but any takers, any ideas? Here's... Oh, I was going to ask if you had done a fight stain. Okay. Oh, well, you totally were asking the right thing. Yes. I was wondering about like an atypical like mycobacteria. Or that's exactly but... what it is. Good job. Wow, that's fantastic. Yes, I did a fight stain eventually. Finally occurred to me the granulomas, thankfully, were what, what clued me in. And there were, they surprisingly, not very, I mean, I had to hunt around to find them, but they were very real. And they're little clusters, almost like a little globus, like you'd see in leprosy. I don't think this is leprosy, though, uh, a yeah, solitary I, I lesion. Mean, leprosy probably was, like, first on my mind, but then I was, like, wondering about, like, it's mycobacterial. Or just right. It's so if it were leprosy, what's the, what what type of leprosy would you, would you call this when it, when leprosy makes a mass like this? Histoid leprosy. So histoid okay. leprosy is basically like a leprosy pseudotumor. In this case, I think, based on the clinical situation, I think was probably, like you said, atypical mycobacteria. Um, there's a solitary lesion, and um, you know, usually leprosy is going to have multiple lesions, right? And, um, and in any case, we this case, unfortunately, the PCR was attempted and was negative. But I was like, I don't care. That is definitely AFB in the middle of the cells there. So sometimes a PCR can be false negative on mycobacteria, especially when they're pretty sparse. So, you know, it's great when it's positive, when it's negative, though. So we never were able to figure out the species. But in my heart, I believe it was probably atypical mycobacteria. And, um, and this is basically what you would call a mycobacterial spindle cell pseudotumor. And, um, and the, the leprosy variant of this would be called histoid leprosy, which is a variant of, of lepromatous leprosy, at least the in my to my knowledge i've only actually seen one case of histoid leprosy and i have a digital slide of that um uh, online in a video about it i think and I, I think i have a video about it maybe i don't remember i have a, a slide of it at least i'll put a link down below so if you're watching this at home i'll, I'll link to it below and it's a pretty amazing example of histoid leprosy so the idea is that sometimes people get mycobacterial infection and they get this really revved up uh histiocyte and fibroblast response to it. It induces this really robust response that produces kind of fibrosis and histiocytes so much so that it makes a mass. So it is a pseudo tumor. Okay. So this is the kind of information about it. It often is multiple and in immunosuppressed patients, but to my knowledge, this patient only had a solitary lesion, if I recall, and I wasn't aware of any immunosuppression other than the fact that they were an elderly person. And I do feel like when I see uh, atypical mycobacteria in the skin in my practice, usually it's either granulomatous or kind of abscess-like inflammation. And it's usually in an, 
elderly patients on the extremities. So my thought over time, having seen a fair number of these, is that probably people get exposed environmentally. You know, they got got it through sticking, you know, getting a thorn or some injury in the garden or, or you know, cut themselves when they were fishing or something years ago. And the mycobacteria just kind of smolder there. And then as they get older and their immune system diminishes with old age, as kind of happens in the immunoparesis that comes with old age, um, that then the organisms flare up. And most of the cases I've seen have been floridly positive for organisms. And the same goes true when I've seen leprosy uh, in my former job in Arkansas. There are armadillos there, nine-banded armadillos, which carry leprosy in the wild. Some of them do. And uh, most of the patients that I saw that had leprosy um, either either directly contacted armadillos or were close by, like gardened in the same soil. And I suspect some of them got exposure years before. So again, I think they had it smoldering there. And then when they got elderly and their immune system diminished, then the organisms exploded. And most of those were lepromatous leprosy with just billions of organisms. And um, we wrote a paper about that. I'll link it below about um, leprosy in Arkansas and our experience. And, and it was really fascinating that we did see some patients that did not directly touch armadillos, but still got leprosy. Um, and we think it's because the leprae organisms can live in the soil. So um, inside soil dwelling amoeba. So if you're real excited about that, I obviously like infectious diseases. So you can tell I'm excited about it. But if you want to go read more, I'll put put down um, in the, below the link to the paper and you can go check it out. So in any yeah. case, um, mycobacterial pseudotumor, uh, kind of analogous to histoid leprosy and a really dramatic case. So when, uh, and I remember seeing a couple of these at meetings in the past and thinking, I will never recognize this in practice. So I'm proud of myself for getting at least this one. And there's another one that I recently showed in another meeting, which I'll have a video on online soon. So I'll have both of the cases I've seen um, uh, available for review online. I hopefully I've not missed any other ones, but I do think sometimes it looks kind of like um, dermatofibroma. I've, some of the ones shown at meetings look kind of like a DF, but they had a lot of inflammation or, or they were multiple lesions or the patient was immune suppressed. So you kind of have to have a high index of suspicion. So when I see plasma cells and granulomas, I try to do bug stains usually. And, um, and now that I've seen these, I go looking for it when I see something that's kind of a weird fibrohistiocytic thing with some foamy cells and it doesn't quite fit. And I'm like, I don't want to miss another one. So I want to make sure I get it. So I do my, my fight stain. The other thing that I had on my differential was actually like kind of, I've seen like a granulomatous bee sting reaction. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Um, and it was very lymphocytic. It was lymphohistiocytic like that. That's yeah. amazing. So That's it's I, the same kind of process, right? Where it's a, a exuberant reactive process that produces all of these, you know, this, the spindly stuff that's growing there, uh, which is unusual, right? Usually we see a lot of inflammation without fibrohistiocytic response, but when we see that, it can really cause us to, to, you know, struggle and start thinking about tumors and stuff. So that's really fascinating about the bee sting. That, uh, I'd love to see an example of that one day. So I think that's the end of the, oh, there, yes. Uh, just to point out that not all that in Peripolises is Rosie Dorkman. I think Shakespeare wrote that. Um, I just, just totally blatantly ripped that off from him and then made it about a nerdy pathology thing. I also like to say that not all that palisades is schwannoma because lots of things can palisade. So those are my two um, Shakespeare ripoff quotes. And oh, there, Rosie Dorfman shouldn't have granulomas. I already harped on all of this. Um, and like I said, I did a bunch of stains and then finally did the fight. And I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And oh yeah, this is the other case I had, which came in like a, like literally a month later from the same person who sent me, both of these are consult cases from the same pathologist. And I thought they're going to think I'm crazy to make this ultra rare diagnosis like twice in a month, or I, it was, I don't know, a few weeks, a month or two, I can't remember, but it, near, near each other, near in proximity of time. Um, so this is the other case, which is absolutely dr much more dramatic on the, the stains. And again, I'll have pictures and, and whole slide images from that one available. And I'll put links to that down below once I uh, release that. So you can go check it out um, if you're watching this online. Um, really unbelievable case. Wow. Wow. Still blows me away.